Okay, and here we go. Okay, so welcome everybody to part three of uh, Metran's website Drupal training. In the previous lessons we covered uh, basic content entry for most of the content types for uh, the website and we went over how to use the WYSIWYG editor. We talked about how to enter and maintain content on pages and on for events and news items. Um, today we're going to talk about some of the finer points of maintaining content um, on the Metrans website. Um, we'll talk about, can everybody see my home page by the way or my screen? Yeah. Great. Okay, so a couple of things that we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about how to change the images on the home page for each of the three centers. Um, we'll talk about how to add or change the sponsors that show up in the sponsors blocks um, on the various pages. And we will talk about how to, there's some pages where editing the content is done a little differently than some others. Just briefly, if I go to a research page, for instance, that lists content, um, there's no edit tab on here. And what I have to do is click a configure block in order to get in. We'll cover that in a little more detail. And, um, and then the other feature that I'm going to show you today is how to uh, create a microsite um, on the website. There are a number of uh, whenever whenever let me see let me let me show you the existing site so I can tell you I can illustrate the feature that we've replicated on the new site. There are many times when a conference or workshop is added to the site and in itself it gets uh, like a microsite of its own with its own menu. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to um, construct something that looks like this where you've got a microsite with its own submenu. Hey, um, and then, yes? I have, this is Alex. Okay. I am on, I'm looking at a page that just says Metron's website weekly project status. Am I supposed to be looking at something else or is that as far as we are? Yeah, me too. Oh, wait a minute. Sorry, I'm showing you the wrong screen. I've got three monitors here. I think I was showing you the wrong one. Okay. I can see that. Now you see the Metra, the new Medtrans website? Yep. Okay. Yes. Sorry you about know, that. Kurt, Kurt, you yes. need to, when you ask a question, you need to get a response from every person, please, because then we'll know for sure if we're all doing it. Uh, okay. I'm going to make one adjustment here. Sorry, there's one feature I need to turn on here because I need to demo it. Okay. So what I want to talk to you about first and to show you is um, how to change the images for the three centers um, on the home page. Um, and the thing to know about these is that each uh, center can have more than one image and it's set up so that if there's more than one image um, assigned to one of the centers, uh, when the page is refreshed then a different image, it'll rotate a different image in. Right now there's only one image assigned to each center. Uh, what I'm going to do is show you how to add, I'm going to add two images to uh, Metrans UTC to show you how it's done. It's very easy. So you'll notice that um, on each page, for when you're, when you're logged in, you'll see this button that says Edit under each of the images. So if I click on the Edit button for Metrans UTC, I get a page that looks like this. And what's important is that I scroll down here and 
under image is what I'm going to see um, lists the images that will be displayed under um, or for that center um, on the website. So if you notice there's a picture of the buses and if I click into this page, by the way, this is the description that appears under the image. And as you can see, there is the thumbnail for the image that currently appears um, for the Metrans UTC Center. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add another image, which is real easy. I click the Browse button. And I look for the image that I want to add to it. In this case, I'm going to add a desert image, and then I upload it. I'm going to add another one, so I have three. I'll add Koala to that as well, and I upload it. And then I save the whole thing. So you notice Koala shows on here. If I, re if I refresh the page, I'll get a different image. So similarly, if I go into Metro Freight, which currently has one image, I can add, let's see, let's add penguins to this and upload it. So this provides the ability to change, you know, the look and feel of the site, and in particular, if there are special events going on that um, uh, Metrans would like to promote, this is another way of doing it. When you, meant, when you mentioned that there was a message underneath it, mm -hmm. is that uh, because of the AP, APA, ADA, whatever that's called? Does it need to have a, a, a oh, so this, what identifying I was saying is, statement or identifier of what it is? Yeah, it's just this, this description here is, is edited on this page. So oh. this, is, this is the content that appears. I see. I can't. It's so tiny, I can't read it. So. Oh. Well, let Can me you make it bigger. Yeah. Is that better? Yep. Okay. 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 So I could see, for example, if on under Metrans UTC, I have like a a conference coming up. I could mm -hmm. put an image there. About the that, conference, yeah. About the conference, right? Can you click? Can you um, assign a link to that so that if they click on it, it'll take them to a section that maybe might be all about that conference? Yeah, we didn't. We didn't define it that way. We talked about it. We were going to put in this originally. We talked about having a, a single slideshow here that when the different slides came up, they would click through to something. In the end. Um, Jen and Vicky thought this would be this this would suffice. So, yeah, to answer your question, we didn't we didn't, we didn't implement that feature. Okay. So, um, so that's pretty straightforward. Like I said, you just you know you click on the button. You can change the text for that block. You can add an image. You can remove an image if you like. It's pretty easy. Okay. And um, so I wanted to talk to you about and show you how uh, sponsor and partner images and links um, are added and managed on the site. So you'll notice down below here we've got um, a block that shows gold sponsor, silver sponsor, bronze sponsor. Um, similar block of information appears on the Metrans UTC page where we have three sponsors, gold, silver, and bronze. Um, I have to apologize. As I was talking to Jen, I messed up the Metro Freight homepage, and I've got to fix that. But that would also have um, sponsors on it or partners. Um, just as the National Center for Sustainable Transportation page has uh, images for partners. 
and these um, also rotate, meaning that if I refresh the page, I should see if if there are more than three partner partners assigned to National Center, then those images will rotate here. Um, so, and similarly on Metrans UTC, I should be able to refresh my page. Oops. And see the logos for the sponsors change. So let me just okay, show you. So what I hear you saying is that okay for the back to Metro UTC, mm -hmm. Metrans UTC. Mm -hmm. uh, when this comes up, uh, the sponsors on the bottom left with the Metrans Associates, it only shows shows three at a time. Right. But it varies each time. Is right. There a, okay. Is there another location where they're all listed? There's no one location where they're all listed. Um, you can find them all in via content management. If I go into content management or search con or content search, which are very similar ways of finding content, and what I can do is I can filter by content type. In this case, sponsor partner, and it lists all the ones that are on um, the site. What Since we just added a whole bunch, and I'm, what I'm realizing is that what we should do as a convention is precede the name of, in the title by where it appears on the site, because that'll be a lot, that'll make it a lot easier to keep track of these. The, but let me show you how you add one of these. So um, if I want to add another sponsor say to Metrans, I would I can go to my dashboard and under create new content items I could click sponsor partner and the first thing I do is I assign it um, a center now, in this case, Metrans, Caltrans, and UTC are all, they effectively are the same thing. Um, doesn't matter which one of the three you appear, they'll, they'll all appear both on Metrans and Metrans UTC. Uh, let's see. My... I'm going to add a logo for a company called American freight and I'm just going to note on here that it's in Metrans this title I'm typing here it never appears on uh, the site it's, it's just used for administrative purposes so you can have to help you find um, the entry in Drupal so when I look for the logo um, let's see I want to go find my the image for American Freight, click it, upload it, and I also, one of the things I want to do is add the URL for the sponsor so that people can click through on the logo to go to that sponsor's homepage. So I'm putting in the URL for uh, American Freight Corporation. And so I really just did three things here. I selected, uh, you know, which entity center I wanted it to be in. I gave it a title. Uh, the sponsor level gold, silver, and bronze um, only applies to Metrans and Metrans UTC um, sponsors and I'll show you how that works but I'll save this and you notice let me just go back in I did make American Freight um, a gold sponsor and what that means is that when I go to the home page or if I go to Metrans UC, UTC page I should see 
American Freight. You'll notice that I have gold sponsor, silver sponsor, bronze sponsor. So this is what um, that's, this is what that setting drives. Let's see if I can get American Freight to show up. So I'm refreshing my page, and there's American Freight. So again, these images rotate and. Specific to gold, silver, and bronze, um, that setting was done where you saw it in the sponsor partner uh, content item. So let me just go back in and show you what I did. So here's my Metrans American Freight sponsor. So again, all I did was I selected the the uh, entity center, I gave it a name, I told it was gold, and I gave it the image and the URL. Do you have to have the image in a certain size, or does it size it? Um, it will size it. I do recommend, and I put this in the, in the documentation, I do recommend that um, you size it before you put it up there. Um, for two reasons, um, and the it should be if if you're going to do that, you should make it a maximum of 60 pixels uh, tall and um, 238 pixels wide. Um, and the reason you want to do that is because first of all, it, it makes it the size it really is going to display. If you put up a, a really large image, it squishes it down and puts it into that space, but it still has to um, load the really large image file so it slows things down. But, but the other thing is that if you put in a really large image and you let uh, the website decide you know what size to make it, oftentimes it doesn't come out the resolution that you want. It's usually, it's always best to develop an image in the size that you want it and in the resolution that you want it so you know exactly what you're getting. But if I don't do that, the system will handle it fine. Okay, because one of the things you'll notice, is, especially looking at the ones, for example, that are up there right now, mm -hmm. you have you had a kind of a the ILWU one on the right hand side was is a circle that didn't take up much space, and the Majestic Realty one is always very wide. Mm -hmm. And then when you look at some of the others, I mean, some of them are really wide, some of them are really tall. Um, so if this yeah, that's a difference in I mean, th there's not a whole lot you can do about you know, logos for that, you know, companies put together, you know, so instance, I mean, if I wanted to, for instance, on this screen, I could squish down the BNSF logo, but it probably wouldn't look right, so. Well, that was one of the challenges we always have, because there's all different shapes and sizes. Okay, right. so, so the guideline is somewhere, somewhere between 60 pixels high and 230 pixels wide, depending on how it relate yeah, to yeah. the shape of the logo. Right, so they, right. They vary so for, so for instance, the ILWU logo, this is, I can tell you, this is 60 by 60. And this one, it's the BNSF is 60 by, well, here I can bring it up. And it's 60 by 238. Okay, yeah, because that's always the widest one. And if you can't, they can't do a lot with it because of that. You know, I mean, it really is tricky. All right. Well, no, yeah, no. yeah, you can't mess with somebody's logo too much. But and these now, do you have these? Uh, is this set up so that they're linked? Yes. To their website. Yes. So if I click on BNSF, it clicks through to their website. Okay. And this is the one I just entered for American Freight. Except, I guess I assume that American Freight is the same as Freight Center. That's the URL I ended up getting, getting, getting for them. But this is, we'll take this off because it's not real. I just put this up as a, as a demo. And BNSF is no longer a sponsor. Oh, okay. Uh, I have a two questions. Sure. Yeah, first thing is in creating sponsor and partners, the entry center. Mm -hmm. There's a metrans, UTC, Metro Freight, and NCST, but why there is a car trans? I'm sorry, what's the question? What was the last? In dashboard, uh -huh. creating 
between a sponsor and partners. Mm -hmm. There are entity center. I can choose like five. Yeah. And in entry center, why there's the uh, why there are five? The, because um, within the system, we've defined five entity centers, which to which things can get assigned. In this case, um, I okay, yeah. So. The structure of Metrans, and this is kind of a semantic thing, but we refer to Metrans itself as the umbrella organization, and then within that we've got three um, centers, which are Metrans UTC, Metro Freight, and um, Metro Center. But if you think of these as things to which content in the site can be assigned, you know, we came up with the term entity center. So entity center Metrans means that well, here, here's an example. So if I go to um, events, Metrans events, I'm going to see events in here that have specifically been assigned to the Metrans UTC as opposed to, see, here's that same dropdown. If this is, the, if I really, if I didn't want this, this, uh, event to appear in Metrans UTC or if it was specific to say Metro Freight I could change it here and this that way it would appear on the Metro Freight page not on the Metrans page. Oh I see but I mean why there's a Caltrans? Okay so Caltrans is sort of a legacy thing there are um, that pertains uh, strictly to uh, research projects I think that's the only time it's used but if I have a research project um, one of the ways I can filter it, because there was a category, and this is just oh, as a legacy thing, they were called um, Metran, I mean Caltrans uh, research projects. And so I think there's like 20 of those in here. So this is oh. pretty much the only place that Caltrans is used. Uh -huh. but, but that's why it's there. Okay, so it just basically had to have to be there because it's somewhere within the whole website it was an right. identifier. Right, right. If you select uh, Metrans, for your, um, like for example, when you were adding that logo, does that work for both Metrans and Metrans UTC? Yes, yes. They both display the same set of uh, sponsors. Okay. Yeah. So there's one set that, so effectively there's three sets of sponsors. One appears for Metrans and Metrans UTC, and then there's partners that appear for Metro Freight and National Center. So I could create a sponsor for National Center and sponsor okay. level in this case doesn't really matter, but in this oh. case I'll use this logo and here's the URL for this company. And in terms of um, NTSC, Oops. that lever doesn't matter because of partner. I'm sorry. What's your question? Oh, it's like oh, it's the just, level. Yeah. 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 For for um, National Center and Metro Freight, the level doesn't matter. It just ignores it. The, it, it only applies gold, silver, and bronze to. Uh, Metrans slash Metrans UTC. But you 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 put something there, but it doesn't show up as as such. It just yeah, it, puts it, the logo it, into some section. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's putting. Yeah. I'm 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 putting. I'm 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 creating a logo. I'm adding a partner to National Center. Um, here's the logo. Here's the URL. Um, we make this a required field, even though it's ignored by. Um, two of the centers, we make it required just so that, um, you know, you can, we can, we're sort of forcing the issue. If it is Metrans UTC, uh, in fact, we should put a note under there. Um, hang on a second, I'm going to make a note to myself. Because we can add little instructions under here, and that, this definitely deserves one to explain that these are only applicable to Metrans, Metrans UTC. Mm -hmm. So they really have no meaning when it comes to um, National Center or Metro Freight. 
So let me go to National Center. Oh, there. My logo's mm -hmm. already there for Agadanza. And that'll take me right through to their site. Okay, so those are sponsor logos. I want to show you, I started showing you before, but I just wanted to go back and cover it formally. Some pages on the site, and most of the time when you go to a page, you see the edit tab up here in the left. And you click on it and it takes you into uh, the edit page for that content item. Sometimes you'll go to a page like uh, research projects and you won't see that tab up here. And the reason for that, just for background purposes, is this, this um, page is a list of items that's been automatically generated by Drupal. I can click through to one of these and I can go to the specific item and when I'm at a specific item I do get that edit tab. But when the, when the page is generated automatically for me, Drupal says, no, this is a list, it's not a regular page. Um, so I'm not going to put this edit tab up there. But so what we do is we make it a little easier, and we have to, you know, add this little uh, feature to make it easy to um, edit the content at the top of the page. Because oftentimes you want to introduce your list of whatever whatever it is, you know, with some content, and you want to be edit be able to edit it from time to time. So on research project list pages with the filter, there you'll always see this configure block which when I click on it just lets me go into a WYSIWYG where I can change the content if that if I like. So that exists also on all of the research project pages. So this has this page actually has quite a long introduction but it's all edited via the configure block link. So that's all I wanted to show you there. While we're there, can we take a look at the list of the researchers? Sure. And so what you're saying, for example, the same thing with this. This is the list so you don't edit it here to yeah, the individual. This is a list page, so I should be able so that I should be able to edit this. Let me see if I can Only do it. Only that part, I see. Mm -hmm. This may need clarification. Oh, here it is. Configure block. Yeah, see, so here's, this is where I would, I would edit the, not the list items themselves, but. Right, that's the wording at the top. The wording at the top, right, Got exactly, it. exactly. So if I wanted to edit the content for any of the researchers, um, these don't click through to individual pages for them, but what I would have to do is I would go to search content. Let's say I want to edit for Garrett Assay, I could go to search content. And I could search for Garrett in the title. Oops. Helps to spell it right. But so there's Garrett, and I can edit the content for him, which will subsequently appear on that page. And um, on any of the research projects that he's worked on, the same information will appear. Oh, going back to that, go back to where his name was. Okay, so when his name is in there, show me where that page was when you very first went in. And is that what is, or is that where we are at now? Which one, the, uh, where I edited the content? Where his name, where his uh, name is. How does it, um, is, in other words, under his, under title, go back one. So this is the page you wanted to? No, where it lists the researcher himself that when you put Garabasse up. When we went to his specific 
page where the, his information was uh, uh, entered. Right, right. So, so this is the page where he's listed, right? Okay. And if I wanted to change the information that's displayed for him, I would go to content management or content search. I mean, I can do this from the dashboard also. If I go to the dashboard, I can say for existing content, I know I want to change existing content. And I mean, this is a list of all the content on the site, which there's lots and lots of it. But so I know that I want to look for Garrett. I know I, know I want to look for a um, researcher. So if I want, I can filter this page to just list researchers for me, which it'll do. And then if I want, I can sort by title. I'm still not seeing Garrett, but so this is where this comes in handy. I can say just filter titles by Garrett, and there he is. Okay. So then, so if I when, want, when when you're entering a new person, mm -hmm. a new researcher, mm -hmm. can you show me how that happens? Sure. So. Let's, let me go back to the dashboard. Okay, so there's a section called Create New Content Items. In this case, I want to create a new researcher. So I click Researcher, and I give the researcher. The title is the, is the researcher's full name. So let's say Sam Smith, but then his first name is Sam. His middle name, his last name is Smith. Let's call him a junior. And um, then I would find an image for him, assuming I have one. Let me see if I can have find an image. So you, we would have, would like, for example, uploaded an image earlier. For yeah, you'd, you'd have an image for him, and you, you know, you'd create it. Yeah. Okay. So where are my images? My pictures. This looks like a handsome guy. You have to, let's use that one. <laughs> and you fill in the information for the person. And you can fill in the address information, country, et cetera, et cetera, contact information. If you want, you can add um, a special URL for this person and well sometimes they have their own web pages right exactly and this is where you'd put that in so I could save it and then if I go to my list of researchers which are alphabetical by last name. Let's see. So Sam Smith is probably going to be Can he make a um, search filter in researchers that it's easy to find out someone? Okay, so here's Sam Smith, here's the information that I entered for him. He's not yet been assigned to any projects. This link up here, this is the one that takes you to, oops, okay, I didn't enter it properly. Well, this would be his personal URL. I'm going to make a note about this. Why is that not working? Oh, because I spelled it wrong. I recommend spelling your URL correctly. It usually does help. Yeah. <laughs> okay. But all it takes is one test and then you know. Yep. Yep. Okay. Um, so, now, uh, John, actually, so Mar this John one had a question. John, yeah. what does this has to do when you're going in to find a researcher? Like if you're a if you're someone who's come into the to the website? Or as as the person going to make a change. 
from a, the perspective of somebody visiting the site, there's no filter here. Mm -hmm. I mean, it is alphabetical. From we and this is uh, we're going to be refining this, but on search as research projects themselves. Um, we're going to be changing this wording so it's real clear that you could enter um, the name of a researcher or PI in order to bring up a list of uh, projects that person had worked on. So, for instance, let's see, let's just go Ching. Okay, so I got one project for him. So then, anyway, so I can I can type that person's name in the search field and get a list of projects that person has worked on. Is there a Leslie? I keep thinking there's a Leslie. No, there's no Leslie. There's somebody's. Are you in the last name? The first name. You have to um, use last name. No, you can use first or last. Actually, okay, this th this will search. But, Go ahead. But Thomas. As in O'Brien. Mm -hmm. Why are you not working? Oh, there he is. He's under Tom. Okay. Or put in Jen. That should be, we should get a lot for Jen. If you put in a part of a name like Jen instead of Genevieve, would that find her too? Or does it search by Let me see. Part Looks like it's its whole word. Hmm. Yeah, so it's not searching on partial word. Okay. Okay. And uh, in this screen, mm -hmm. why PI name is black? Oh, it's supposed to be red. We changed that. That's weird. Hang on a second. Well, <clears throat> in actuality, each of these other... The reason it's black is because it's not linked. Um, the other... Um, columns, if you click on it, you can sort by that. So I can sort by topic area. I mean, this is a limited subset. Or I can search, I can sort by project name, I can sort by research project name. This is actually not a sortable field, but what's interesting is that we did, for somebody's request, make that red, and it seems to have gone back to black. Let's see, let's see if that's, all right, I'm making a note about that. Hmm. Not sure how that changed, but that should be red. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, what I'd like to do now is to show you, to walk you through how to create a microsite, which I started showing you. This is an example of a microsite that exists on the uh, current live metrans.org website. And um, <clears throat> it's used commonly to put up a lot of information about a conference that's going on and basically to give the conference its own mini site or microsite you know, within the larger Metrans site. So I'm going to show you how you'd go about doing that um, on the new site. So, okay, so if I go to my dashboard, it's working good. Okay, there's a special section called Microsites, and there's an item called Create Microsite Page. 
In a microsite page, it looks pretty much like any other kind of page. I've got, um, it lets me enter content for um, my microsite. And let me just bring up what I've got here. And in this case, I want to got text here for it. So the name of my conference is it's called, I'm calling it conf, uh, Transportation Conference. And I want to put an image on my home page here, so, or my landing page. So I'm going to find the image that I've I just pulled this from, oh, oh, okay. What it's telling me is that I'm trying to upload um, an image where it's expecting um, a content file uh, with a PDF extension, meaning I'm using the wrong function to upload an image. What I wanted to do is go down here where it says image, click browse, select my image file and upload that. And then we had covered this in content editing. If I copy and paste, highlight and copy the uh, path and file name for the image, I can go up to my WYSIWYG editor, click the image button, and insert that content in the top of my page. Now I've got some other content that I've prepared for it. I'll just paste in. And I probably want to change the formatting on, the, on this a little bit. Oops. I'm not going to go crazy formatting this. You guys get the idea. But um, hang on a second. I'm checking the notes here. Make sure I'm not skipping over anything. Okay. And Okay, so the point right now is that I'm creating what is effectively the landing page or the home page for my microsite. And I've given it some content. I've given it a logo. I've given it a title. And what I need to do down here where it says provide a menu link is to click that and I need to select this item called under parent item, this is all relative to establishing a menu for the microsite. And what I'm doing, what I'm going to do is I'm going to collect, I'm going to select microsite menus. And what that means is that I want this page to be the top level or landing page for um, a microsite which appears under um, a subset of menus called microsite, and it'll become a little more clear as I as I complete this process. So I save this, and by virtue of doing what I just did, uh, by selecting and identifying uh, a menu block, it starts to create a submenu for my uh, microsite over here on the right, just as the old site would have a microsite, I mean I have a menu on the right side of the page. Let me add another page and it'll become a little more clear what the process is. So I'm going to add a second page to my microsite. So I go to dashboard and I come down here and I say I want to create another microsite page. This one I'm going to call, this is my 
summit agenda. And I paste in my content here. Now, again, I could get fancy with my content. I could add a PDF. I could upload a PDF and put a link on here. Let me just do that to show you how it's done to remind you. So file attachment. This is just kind of a dummy PDF I always keep around, but just to show you that I can upload that. And let's say it was the agenda. I could say, I could create a link on the page by, again, taking the path and file name for the file that I just uploaded and turn this text into a link by highlighting it and clicking the link tool, pasting in the path and the file name that I just copied, hitting OK. Now before I save this, what I want to do is show you what I need to do to include this in the microsite that I've just created. So I'm going to click Provide a Menu Link. And now under Microsite Menus, I'm going to look for the one that I just created, which is Transportation Conference. So that's the top level menu item for the microsite that I just created called Transportation Conference. And I'll save this. And now you'll see that my summit agenda now appears um, as part of my microsite. And I can click back to my home page. Or I can click to the summit agenda. So similarly, I would add other pages. I don't have um, a lot of extra content here. But I'll just put together one third page for you just so, you can, so I can demonstrate how that works um, a third time. So I'd go to Dashboard. Create a microsite page. Let's just say it's my microsite third page. I'm just going to put in some text to filler. And then again, I'm going to go down here, click Provide a Menu Link. And under Parent Item, I'm going to come back down and say, I want this to appear under my Transportation Conference microsite. So I click Save. And there it is, except that it's not in the order that I wanted it. So this is the other part of microsites that I want to show you. Sometimes you need to reorder your menu items. And this, this is actually something we, we touched base on for the larger site. If I go, if I want to, if I want to change the order of, let's say, I want to change the order of how of the items in the about menu. This is what I would do. I would go to my dashboard. I would go to menus, main menu, and this lists all of the menu items for the main part of the site. So here's the About section. If I wanted uh, Key Personnel to appear above Advisory Board, I would just move Key Personnel up and save that. And now when I go back to my menu, it appears where I moved it to. So similarly, if I want to change how things appear for my microsite. Uh, let's see, I'm going to go to microsite's microsite menu. And so what we're seeing here is actually, some of these are test content, but there's this represents one microsite, two microsites, three microsites, four microsites, five microsites. This is the 
one that we're working on now, and it's down below just because of alpha, you know, it's alphabetized that way. It's a T, so it's towards the end. Um, but I want my third page to actually appear as the third entry, so I'm going to move it down like that and click Save. Card? Yeah? Uh, in my dashboard, in menu, the main menu, uh, Microsoft menu, Microsoft menu, I mm -hmm. can't change the order. Maybe I don't have that permit? Oh, hang on a second. I'm logged in as admin. But Alex, see. can you change the order? You should be able to change the order. Let me let me log in as a different user. I've never done anything in this. I don't know whether I can do it or not. You should be able to. If you can't, then I need to change a permission setting. Mm -hmm. Who changes permission settings once we get law, um, um, administrators can change administrators, which we're actually going to touch base on next. Okay. Uh, let's see. So I'm logged on as current editor, microsite menu. Oh, I can change. I was able to change that. Are you sure that it's not working for you, John? Well, um, I cannot see that the same function. So if you go to dashboard, yeah, and then you you see Microsoft menu, yeah, and you click on that. Do you see this screen? Oh, uh, it's a different. I I can't change the order. I don't have that um the gray one. I can't see gray. The symbol, the front of. You mean the, this little. Yeah, yeah, I can. You don't see that, that really? Yeah, yeah. Hmm. And ma main menu as well. Okay. Well, you know what? How about after this? Um, uh, after we wrap up, we'll do a. Uh, maybe I'll, what we'll do is I'll I'll let you I'll switch control on the screen and you can show me what you see. Sure. And we can troubleshoot that. Yeah, you could, because you should be able to do this. This is just how you rearrange things. So the other thing I wanted to show you, so it's real nice I created a microsite, but it's it's not. I didn't attach it to anything. There's no way to get to it. So there's two ways that you can then make your microsite available. You can either, um, as is done in the main menu right now, under Outreach, there's a menu item that goes to the point counterpoint um, microsite and this is all actual content but sometimes uh, you may not want to put the oh and let me just explain to you how you would go about that so if I want to put my new microsite on the main menu what I need to do is to get its URL or its alias, which in this case is Transportation Conference. And we covered, um, we talked about how to add things to the menu, but uh, um, in previous training. But it's this is good review. So I make sure that I take the name of the page as it appears in the UR in the uh, browser bar. And if I go to dashboard and I want to add it to the menu, what I can do is say, okay, under menus, main menu, add a link, transportation conference, transport. And then under path is where I want to paste what I just copy out of the uh, browser bar. And let's say I want it to appear just for the heck of it. Let's see, also under outreach. So I save that. Now let's see if it appears where I wanted it to. So under outreach, yes, my transportation conference appears here. 
and I can get to my microsite menu that way. Similarly, if I wanted to, if I didn't want it to appear uh, within the main menu, we're, we're actually going to move uh, point counterpoint into this this particular list of items. So, um, if I wanted, for instance, one of these entries to go to my microsite, what I could do is edit this page. And let's just say I want this to be a link that goes to my microsite. I could make it link head transportation conference and click OK and then save it. Now again, so if I go to outreach town hall. I can now click through to my microsite this way. Mm -hmm. So again, this is a handy way to you know, create a microsite for a special sets of content that um, uh, are required for the site. Okay, are there any questions on any of uh, what we've covered so far? Uh, when you then create that second Okay, so let's see, how can I explain this question? All right, let's, uh, can you go back to the old site for um, the conference or something so I can show you something? Sure. This site? This page? Yes. Yeah. So now, uh, now let's pick a uh, track chair, no, let's pick a... Uh, Hold on, try to read it. Uh, something where there's options under there too. Every page is just created in its own and can kind of have additional links and stuff. And each you can like layer pages on top of a pages. Um, each. Or, um, well, this is this isn't set up to have sub menu items such. That, I know that like on some some websites you can click on an item and it'll expand. And show you sub sub items. These are all just just singular items. Okay. Yeah, and then singular when you go items. to that page, that then becomes a page that you can do anything with it that you can put links on and all the different right. things. Right. 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 And yes. See what I don't have on here. Do I, this doesn't have. This isn't a good example. Uh, go to. Oh, let's see. This is a old one, so it's some of the some of the stuff I moved off of here. Okay, I think I understand. I, okay, you, we can move on. I'll okay. figure it out. Yeah, take a look at the documentation, and you know, you know what's. I I haven't given the only person that actually has an account for the site at this point is uh, John Wong, and um, I have asked Jen a couple of times if she wants me to. Uh, create accounts for everybody else. I would assume that after this session that she'll want to do that. She wants to launch the site very soon and she wants to get a lot of people working on content. So um, so when you say uh, to have an account for the site, that is actually so we have permission to go yes. in to edit? Yeah, you'll so be able to log in. And, to yes, edit. yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. So, but I'm anxious to get, you know, people on there and using it so that, like, you start encountering issues or have questions that, you know, you can, um, you know, shoot them to me and I can answer them because we have the, this limited support uh, period and I just want to take as much advantage of that and let you guys have, you guys be able to take as much advantage of that time period as we possibly can um, to get you up to speed. Is the site that we're on when you're showing us what you're you're doing? Is that the actual website? It's the actual website that will go live. Yeah, you know, I mean, it doesn't have. What we'll do is we'll change the you know the the URL for it. It'll become www.metrans.org. Yes, it is the. So this is yeah actual content. So one of the things that we'll need to do when before it goes live, we I say Urban Insight 
is go through and get rid of you know a lot of the test content like you know like this is a dummy you know there's a lot of dummy uh, dates in here that we just pushed in there so we can make sure that they're working properly okay yeah well that's why I had a question because it's confusing to me so yeah so we need to clean up the junk yes exactly yeah yeah okay what I want to show you now not everybody's going to have this permission but I'm going to go over it um, anyway, but just I want to show you what um, administrators can do. Um, so there's there's two roles, if you will, account types right now. One of them is called Metrans um, Editor, and a Metrans Editor can do everything that we've covered so far in the, in the last two training sessions and this one so far. And the Metrans Administrator can do a couple of more things, including um, add users and change permissions for users and it's pretty straightforward as an administrator you'll see um, well and as an editor you'll see this black uh, menu bar at the top of the page which is put there by Drupal and when you log off it disappears so the public doesn't see it but if I click people it gives me a list of all the people that have accounts on the site which is a pretty short list at the moment and there's a couple of test users on here this is me, current editor, making sure that I can log on as an editor and do all the things that an editor can do, and current admin to make sure that I can do all the right things an administrator can do. So um, if I needed to add a new user, I could click that function up here in the upper left, and I could say, Sam Smith, it's pretty easy. Com. Um, I would actually just type in some bogus password because he's not going to get this. What happens is it just need, for the purposes of creating the account, you need to give it some password. And what will happen here, and then down here, I'll say, well, Sam is going to be a Metrans editor. And then this little button here, this says notify him that I've, account, I've created the account for him. And when I click this button and say create new account, what it does is it sends him an email, and the email says, you've just had an account created for you for metrans.org, um, um, and click on the, this link that it provides you, which will take you back to the site and let you set your password for it. So whatever I typed in here, as soon as Sam uh, comes back and resets his password, then it gets changed in, you know, to only the password that he knows. Um, so the process of creating a new user is pretty easy. Similarly, um, if I decide that I want to promote Sam to the administrator, I can do that. Are you one or the, uh, it appears that you have to be identified like you were Kurt editor and Kurt administrator. So if you're both, do you have to check off both? There actually, if you, well, technically the way Drupal does it is if I click Met editor, if I do click Metrans editor and I click Metrans administrator, it gives you the combined uh, capabilities of both people. In actuality, Metrans administrator can, administrator can do everything that a Metrans editor can do. So okay. it's, to, to have them both clicked is redundant, but there's no downside to it. Okay. Um, and then similarly, I can, if I want to get rid of Sam, if he's, you know, no longer working for uh, the organization, I can cancel his account. A lot of times, it's 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 makes more sense to block an account. Depends on what, if you if you think the person might come back, it's usually easy to block the account, which means they just simply can't log on again. So you have that option to block your, or actually just completely delete the person. So that's uh, what does meta tags at the bottom of that use new that user thing mean? Oh, Hold meta that. tags. I don't think there's. Oh, if well, if if it were um, a site where people users had profiles, you know how like well, let's like 
say Facebook. I mean, you have an account on Facebook. You log in. You know, you you, you create an account. You log in. Um, you can put up information about yourself. Um, this is some of the information that would display about you know Sam Smith if this information were public. You know, this is, this is like okay, a description. Okay, but that doesn't really apply to us. Yeah, so it doesn't apply. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Kurt, um, yeah. where can I see that administrator to Drupal users? That, yes, yeah, that screen. If I make you an administrator, you should be able to see it. Oh, okay. So if you're on, if you're logged in now and you refresh your screen, you should be able to see the people menu item. Um. Okay. Okay, and the one additional thing I wanted to show you for um, that administrators can do, there are several contact forms on the site. So, for instance, there's a contact form for Metrans. It comes up and it looks like this. Now, virtue of the fact that I'm logged in and I'm logged in as an, as an administrator, um, you know, if I were if I were somebody from the public, I wouldn't see any of these tabs right here. Neither would I see the menu items at the top of the screen. But because I'm logged in as an administrator, I see extra tabs. And one of the things I can do when I'm here is I can click on web form, and this gives me the ability. Sorry, click on the edit tab. This gives me the ability if I want to. Um, add a message at the top of the contact screen. So, again, I'm just going to put in some gibberish, but I'll show you so you get the point. Like, So if I wanted to put instructions at the top of the contact form, I could do it here just by using the Edit tab. So that's just a simple thing that an administrator can do. There's also um, an administrator can go in and add fields to um, the uh, the web form if they need to. So I could add another field called another field. Let's see if it's a text field. I can make it mandatory or not. Just add it. Save it, and I can go back to view my form. And so that other field that I created is down here. So that's just an example of how um, somebody with administrative capabilities can um, work with web forms and contact forms. Okay, that I actually. Have a question here, real quick. Let me just sure. ask you a question. I have to go on the old website just to look at it. Okay. Um, so we had on the old website, uh, on the home page, an area to sign up to receive email updates. Oh. That was, that was treated differently than if someone was trying to send us a message. Right. Right. Do we have such a thing now? Yes. That. Do we put it on the home page? Oh yeah, it's over here. This email sign up. There's two places. It exists in two places. There's you can get to it through uh, the about menu. There's the email sign up feature, um, and then on the home page, there's the email sign up feature. So I could tell it. It's kind of a two-step process. I click sign up. And then it asks me for a little more information, my first name, last name, and just confirms my email address. It gives me the option, you know, of getting <clears throat> my email in HTML format or text. People who are visually impaired prefer text. And then what does, where does that information, where is that set to go? This goes to the MailChimp account. Okay, so it goes to the same, same place it did before. Yeah, yep, yep. And the contact information, where do they have that set up to go? 
Okay, so the contact information, good question. That actually is another feature within web forms. So here, when I click on web forms, it takes me to this page which lists my four contact forms. And so the contact for Metrans UTC, for instance, if I click on, let's see if I can get this right, web form, emails, what this is telling me is that this is going to you. This is set up. Okay, so that's related to the old concept. Okay. All yeah. right, that's fine. Yeah. And and that's this can fine be changed. For now. That's good. That's where it should be. Yeah. And so each of these let me see, let me let's just see where each of them are going. And then that should probably be different for the others. So Yeah, I think it is. Might as well look. So Yeah, let's see. So Metrans is going to Now this one's going to you also. Okay. That's all right. The one that's going to be different would be Metro Freight and um, the, other, the National Center. Okay, let's look at National Center. National Center. Oh, that says it's going to you. Wait a minute. I know one of them's going to somebody else. Should we change okay, National Center? Oh, I don't know who it is going to be right now. So, but it probably I uh, we need to find out who they want to have get it's the easy, contacts for easy, that. Easy to change. And then uh, let's check Metro Freight. Okay. Okay, Metro Freight. I'm pretty sure one of them is different. It has to be Metro Freight because that's the last one we're looking at. This is going to this person. Okay, that would be right. All mm -hmm. right, okay. that's good. Okay. Okay, the only one we'll, we'll just um, double check what they want to do with the National Center one, and we can and we can always yeah. fix that then. Okay. Yep. But now we know. Yep. Yep. Easily fixed. Okay. Um, okay, so that's all I have to cover today. Does Does anybody have any questions? Anything that we've talked about before that you'd like to re have a review of? I know it. You know, you haven't actually been had a, the opportunity for hands on, and I'd like to make that happen as soon as um, as we can, so that you get the hands on and come up with the questions and can shoot them to me. Um, so I'll talk to Jen about that uh, right after this. Sure. Um... In terms of my accounts, uh, still I cannot see uh, people and main menu and also microsite menu. I can change order. Okay, why don't we look at that together? Why don't we wrap up and let everybody else go, and then I can switch screens um, and then troubleshoot that with you. Does anybody else have any questions or things they'd like uh, some more information about? I had a question just to get back to the administrator editor um, concept. In the old program, um, there was a, when you made changes, if you were, uh, let's see, there was kind of a process where those changes were sent to the administrator so they knew that a change was being made. Oh, okay. Uh huh. Is there such a process in this one? Yeah, it's funny. Jen and I were just talking about that this afternoon. We didn't we didn't build in that process. What we um, um, the answer to your question is no. What we Jen and I thought would probably work. Um, it's a little less formal, but what we thought would do is for 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 any content item. So, like if I create a new page or if I create a new event, um, the default in Drupal is to automatically publish it, i.e. make you know it visible to the world. Um, but what we thought we would do is change it um, so that the default is to not publish it. And that way if somebody's entering a series, you know, or has been asked to enter um, a set of content, they can do that and then let whoever directed them to do so take a look at it. It's and then it's easy for that person to go in to content management. And one of the things, one of the ways you can sort content in this list is by whether it's published or not published. And then they could like just sort it by show me everything that's not published 
and then they can go through and uh, check out the content and then publish it if it's appropriate or you know ask the person to revise it if that's what needs to be done okay so it's yeah it's not an automated process but the ability to do that is there okay no that's all right I think that's not a bad idea uh, at least to know how to know that we have that capability because if you have a yeah. lot of people working on it sometimes you would need to have some yeah kind of yeah exactly person. Yeah, and especially as the site's being launched, there's a lot of content that still needs to be added to it. I think we're pro what we're probably going to do is launch it before. You know, what we're doing is we're starting with like the most important and most recent content um, first, and then launching the site, and then some of the historic stuff will add after the site goes live. You know, like old, whether it's reports or conferences, things like that, so that eventually it gets on there. But all of the most important stuff. Um, is on the site before it goes live. Okay. Okay. And I know this is a really basic question, but if I just want to look at it again, just on my own, just to see what's on there, um, what what's the what's the URL for me to do that? Oh, okay. So it's um, here. Let me put it in. Let me just put this in email. Oops. Well, it's it's metrans.urbaninsight.com, and if you enter that, you'll see a login, and the login is um, username uh -huh. metrans, and the password is Apple. That's right. I remember now. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, but uh, yeah. you know, when yeah. you don't do it, Kurt, truthfully. Uh, oh, no, know, I know. But <laughs> no, well, well, that's why I'm so anxious to get people accounts so you can actually start playing yeah. with it. I mean, I can give you, you know, I mean, it's like anything. You, know, you, know, you, get, you get a lesson on how to do it, but until you actually can do it, you have less, you know, you're less likely well, to retain it. And the only other thing I would say with that is that, uh, why, that's why I was asking you if that's the live uh, web, new website. Uh, that kind of scares me to make go in and do things with my limited amount of information and save anything. I just gotta, but I want to go in and at least get a feel for using some of these uh, procedures. Yeah, I, I, I would say I would say there's there's this little risk to that before the site goes live. It just like you have a you know you know sense of it, you know before we go live of the. The content that you entered that was experimental and you know can go in and um, you know I mean one of the things also I mean it's not readily apparent from looking at the screen but there's the author list which right now every it's all admin but um, as soon as everybody has their own account um, the author will list the name of the person oh, that that's entered. good okay that's a good thing so you can okay. sort by you know your name and see everything that you entered and then you can actually even do a mass delete. Like I could go over here and check. Like if these, if I want all I five of these I, things deleted, okay. I can go up here and just say, you know, delete all those things. So it's you can do it pretty easily. So yeah, I encourage you to. Like I said, I'm going to check with um, Jen and see if I can give everybody counts now. Yes, that would be good. We would we would like to just so we can start to um, to use those. Yeah. At least to try it out. And, yeah. Um, yeah. And then um, let's see. Okay, that's that's probably enough for me. I can't absorb much more. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, great. Like I said, I want to get everybody going so that when you run into issues, if you run into issues, you can um, you know let me know and I can help troubleshoot. Okay. Well, thanks everybody. I'm going to stop.